want to share a story with you. The other night, my brother was in town. So he was in Phoenix. We're hanging out with our aunt, who's also in Phoenix. And she actually hasn't seen my brother in a very long time. So we're all catching up, having a nice dinner. And she tells us the story about my uncle, her husband who passed away. And when she was with him in hospice, uh, I guess one of the things they do is sort of some type of checklist with questions and different things to just discuss and go over. And one of the questions for my uncle when he was sick was, how do you want to be remembered? And she said, you know, she remembers vividly asking him that question and him pondering it for a few minutes and saying one word, grateful. And I thought that was one of the most powerful, beautiful tributes to just life itself, to the people in his life, to everything. I don't think Hollywood script writers could come up with a more perfect answer, a more ideal answer. And, you know, it's something that I've been thinking about a lot, just gratitude in general, that sort of perspective, that power we all have to choose and how that sort of reinforced the gravity, the importance of having uh, gratitude as a North Star. You know, we all have the ability to choose gratitude. And the older I get, the more I learn that it's not a small thing. One of the most important books I've read by Dan Sullivan and Benjamin Hardy, I've referenced it a few times, it's called The Gap in the Gain. And it talks about this, this sort of binary, this ability we have to either look at the gap, right? What's not there in our life that we want to be there, the things that are missing, the things that hurt us, versus the gain, which is how far we've come in what we do have and how lucky we are. And it's funny, it doesn't matter the situation. There's always both. There's always a metaphorical shelf right in front of you and you can choose which one you want to take and how you want to see the situation. You know, I think something that I'm learning as well is that we all have natural predispositions. We have biological tendencies. How you view the world innately is not going to be the same as I do. Nature plays a role, right? I need personal development. That's why I love it. That's why I've, in a way, made it my mission. I love philosophizing and diving into it. It helps me. Without it, I wander. Because my instinct is not, I am so happy. Let's find the positive here, right? It's training the mind to say, ouch, this might hurt, but where's the value? And at the end of the day, that's fine. Because I get there, ultimately, right? And I scream that from the mountaintops because we can all do that. We can all look around and say, hey, There's something to be grateful for here. There's value here. Even in the darkest moments, even in our suffering, there is value. You know, and in that book, The Gap Versus the Gain, that's what Dan Sullivan says. You know, especially as entrepreneurs, it's like, if you're ambitious, it's very hard to see anything but the gap to where you want to go, right? We're impatient. We want it now. But how lucky are we to even be afforded an opportunity to bring something into existence? It's not lost on me that so much of what I talk about is first world, right? It's like, if you're not happy with your life, fix it. You can, right? That's a luxury to be able to do that, right? 
there's a time and place where it's like, I just need food, I need water, I need shelter, right? I need to hide from violence or, you know, to be violent myself, whatever it is, right? And, and so we're in this sort of place in time where we can really make the most of life and why shouldn't we? But I think, you know, with that comes the reminder we have to understand how lucky we are and how much we have. And, you know, I've, I've said it before, that is, it, it's armor. To choose gratitude is to choose armor. It's to make yourself stronger. It's to strengthen yourself. I was with my brother the other day. We were in uh, Sedona, Arizona. And I just found out that my car when we were in Sedona, some rodent got under it and chewed the front trunk sensor and some wire harness. I, clearly, I don't know much about that stuff. And so with Teslas, when something's wrong like that, an alarm goes off, like a, just an obnoxious alarm, and it doesn't stop. It just goes until, you know, you can get some type of you know, you have to bring it to a mechanic. You have to bring it to one of their folks who can take care of it, but there's no way to override it. And I'm on the phone with them. I'm doing sort of the restart on the computer, on the car, nothing. So that means every time we got in that car for that entire road trip and beyond, there's this just obnoxious alarm that, by the way, when you turn the music up, the alarm goes up to match the music. It was almost comical, right? But at first, it's incredibly frustrating. And especially because, you know, they were saying that I couldn't get an appointment for like 45 days. I'm like, so you want to tell me for 45 days, I'm going to be driving around with a siren going off in my car. We got it taken care of sooner. But it brought me to that moment, right? The gap versus the gain. Because you feel angry. It, it feels stupid and unnecessary. Why is this happening? This is obnoxious. But then you think, what a problem to have. Poor me, my Tesla's making a sound while I'm on a road trip with my brother in one of the most beautiful places in the world, soaking in the scenery. This is when you're gonna throw a tantrum, right? And it's that same idea, there's just, it's so easy to be angry and overlook the good. And I say that not to be cliche. I say that because it's really become a superpower for me. And I wanna share that with you. That's what I do. I share my wins, I share my losses. When I discover something that I think is meaningful or powerful or impactful, I want you to know. Because some of the biggest changes we make are little alterations to our perspective. And so every time you're angry, picture that shelf right in front of you and there's the gap and the gain. Two things, right? There's a reason to be grateful or resentful. There's the choice to move forward or to be slowed down. And you reach out and you pick up the one you want to pick up. They'll always be there. And so if you start becoming accustomed to picking up the gain and the gratitude and the value. You'll see that, you know, in this game of life, you're not a puppet, you're the puppet master. You know, Viktor Frankl talked about in his book, the one thing that can't be taken away from us is our attitude. It doesn't matter what's going on around us, what life is presenting, attitude can't be taken away. Your gratitude is always there. So whatever you're going through, good, bad, in the middle, think of that shelf. Think of the value that you can pick up at any moment and use to better yourself as opposed to these narratives that we create that hold us back or make things seem harder or put us in that gap unnecessarily. In a world where you can be anything, choose to be grateful.